about to embark on the road from Kings Canyon to Alice. Not the 400 kilometres of bitumen, the long way back. We're going to attempt the shortcut back, which I think is about 140 k's, and apparently it's not a very good road. So a lot of people don't do it. Uh, apparently it's very corrugated, it's got lots of washouts, quite bumpy. Um, we've had to prepare the, the van especially for it, and I have to go inside and actually purchase a permit so we can drive on this road. I'm going to go and see what it's all about. Outback Oasis General Store. Okay, Alicia. Why do we need a pass? What's the road like? And etc. etc. All right, so this is the Marini Loop Road. Uh, it's an indigenous land area that you're passing through. Yeah. So that's why we do the permits. It is privately owned land. They're just grateful that, you know, we're very lucky and grateful that they let us pass through it. Yeah, okay. It's dirt road. It can be really corrugated, big dips. <laughs> um, you know, when it rains, when it comes through raining big, the road just gets completely washed out. Yeah. So that's a part of why we have the permit system. Yeah. So some of that money that you pay goes to the maintenance of the road. Yeah. The rest of it goes to the indigenous communities that live along the road. Okay. Um, so, so how many kilometres is the road, do you know? It's 150 kilometres of dirt. Okay, and how long does it take roughly? Um, it's about two hours to pass through it. Yep, okay. Two and a half, depending how bad the road is. <laughs> so do you know the conditions of the road at the moment? At the moment, it's pretty corrugated. It's yep. pretty sandy, there's a few big dips, but it's passable. I've been sending a lot of people that way, so... Perfect. A lot of people are getting through. And how much does it cost to get the permit? The permit is $6.50. It's valid for three days, but you don't. you only need it for the road. A lot of yeah. people get confused and think that you need it once you're in ah, the West right. Parks, okay. but it's just the road. Just that once road there. Once you're then. past this point here, you're good to go. Perfect. No Thank worries. you very much. No worries. Usually when we drive on corrugated roads, I don't have to do a whole lot inside because the suspension is so good in this van, it handles it quite well. But because we're going on this road, which is meant to be pretty full on, I'm going to show you a few of the extra things I've done in preparation. Just and here we have the van set up for travel. So the stuff that you see on the bed now is usually on the bed because it sits on our little shelves around here the one thing we've done differently this time we've removed the television usually we don't even on corrugated roads because we have got a velcro strap and it's reinforced but for this road we've taken it off and just shoved it under the pillows there so that's the only difference in that area is the television coming into the kitchen dining area not much has changed here usually i have a couple of things sitting in there my laptop usually travels plugged in it's been unplugged that's been put away um, Chris's laptop's up there as well. We have actually removed the heavy things out of here. Usually we don't, even on corrugated roads, they stay fully loaded, they've never fallen off, but for this road, <laughs> we've removed um, what's in those. The kombucha that I brew usually travels in here. Um, I've actually packed a towel around it, so it's just padded a little bit better in, um, in there. The microwave, we've got the plate, it's wrapped and padded in there and coming into the bathroom i think this is where the majority of the change really is my hair dryer usually travels in there even on corrugated roads this one we've taken it out um, i removed the glass um, stuff from in there i've actually just popped it in here with a couple of things i've wrapped all of our hard drives etc in this padded bag this time in the shower so we have one of these dispensers i've removed the containers, shampoo, conditioner, etc. Um, and I've put them all down in here along with a variety of other things. Normally this has only got the basket and a couple of things in there. These usually hang on the hooks up here. Um, they've been known to jump off. So that's padded down. I've actually dismantled the vacuum cleaner, put it in there, just padded a few extra things out with the towels. The shower head always comes down and it's buried under there. Usually it just sits in that basket. I have also removed the towels from here because sometimes they roll off and land on the floor. So I've just folded them and put them um, either side of this yoga mats down and that's pretty much it so as i mentioned before this van does travel very well on the corrugated um the corrugated roads but because this one's just that little bit more intense it's going to go that little bit further obviously chris has done things to the van on the outside to make the ride inside a whole lot smoother he's adjusted the um airbags i think and he's lowered the tire pressure so i don't know too much about that so i'll let him fill you in later okay so as miriam told you we are on the marini par loop road so this takes us from kings canyon we've just spent a few nights up on the top here exploring kings canyon it'll take us from here back to the west mcdonald range sort of the west loop of it all um out to fink gorge and all those sort of places so you've done the inside you prepared it all have you yep okay outside now 
Number one, tie pressures. We've got 160 k's of corrugated. It gets pretty brutal. We've heard we had a few reports, especially on the Alice side of it. So it's not just corrugation. So yeah, it's corrugation. There's there's washout. Well, that's all. Really yeah. if, you, if you hit a washout, you must be uh, not paying attention. But yeah, there's some sand, boggy parts. Uh, anyway, prep work. Tie pressures, of course. I've dropped the van tires down to about 30 psi. Uh, that's a yeah, that's a cold pressures, and I've taken a bit of air out of the bags as well. I've dropped it down normally to run about 65 to 70 psi. I've dropped it down to about 55, just to make it that little bit softer. And in the truck as well, air pressures. Come over this way. Come on. Stone Stomper, Amos. Look, it's already, it's already picking up rocks from Kings Canyon back to here. So, um, tie pressures on these big ties um there is no golden rule to tie pressures i've said that before it all depends on what tie you have what size tie you have um the weight of your car your axle loads everything so these are uh, these are the open country the Toyota open country rts these have got a max cold pressure running of 65 psi um with a load rating of 126 so that's about, I think it's about 1,750 kilo per tyre. So that gives us about three and a half tonne on the back. I do know that this truck on the rear axles, we're at about 2.8 tonne. And then we've got about 350 to 400 kilo ball weight. So that still takes us just under our max tyre pressures and, and load rating for this tyre. So deflation, I'm only going to knock these back to about 50 PSI. I just want to be very careful here. We um, don't want to go over our load ratings for the pressure that's actually in the tyre. And... King shocks as well on the back. Now we've got a full adjustable King shock, shock in there. I've left these ones on hard. I don't really want it getting any softer. I think the, the rear end sits absolutely perfect. Front end is way different again. So again, not the same tie pressures. I definitely don't do that. Um, we've only got about 2.4 ton on the front of these. So I've dropped these back to about 40 PSI. Um, it still gives me my load rating and it should be fine. And then my shocks, I've wound them back all the way to soft. And I found the best with the van on to stop porpoising and all that carrying on is I knock it back about five clicks from from dead soft. So that should be mint. So it's all trial and error, but 100% ties. Check your max cold pressure tires, um, pressures and then check the load rating on your tires. And then make sure you know the weight of your vehicle, especially your axle loads, because that will change as well from front to back, depending on how you've got your truck set up. So... Are we going to go do this or what? Yeah, and every how often we're going to stop and check inside the van just to make sure? Every 300 kilometres. Every 300 kilometres. <laughs> I don't want to stop when I'm going. <laughs> no, we'll just stop every now and then just check, just make sure make everything's sure. fine. But yeah, it's all just common sense on a dirt road. And then speed, man. Common sense. The slower the better, right? Mm, yeah, not on corrugation. <laughs> it's all just, yeah, it just no. goes back to common sense. Just be wary. Just check your road conditions. If it's super corrugated and your car's bouncing around, well, find that happy speed where it's going to go straight and nice. And it depends on tyre sizes too you know my 37 inch tires got a lot bigger rolling diameter so it's going to generally go over the bumps that little bit better than the smaller tires that have created those corrugations so every setup is different yeah every setup is totally different but get 37s <laughs> dirt road caravan on final check all good to go how do you know it's all good to go you didn't check anything you just did final that for, check. you just did that for the camera <laughs> no it's all good i've checked it so many times all right, let's go. We've got this long road ahead of us. Oh, and one more thing I do when I'm on a dirt road is I always get my shackles and I use a shifter to fully nip them up because they've gone loose so many times. I mean, I've lost shackles and I've lost the bolts out of the shackles, so that's another thing that I do. Only on dirt roads, I don't generally do it on um, normal roads. Just a finger tight and then back off that little bit. So. Another little hack. It feels like love. Yeah, it feels like love.
feels like love. Yeah. dusty road that didn't have their headlights on was just it blew my mind away man you cannot see when there's dust you can't see so you're looking for headlights and, and oh and taillight it's just downright dangerous guys so please any dirt roads put your headlights on halfway mark inside the van all we've done is taken all of these off simply because the little caps um had popped off and i thought oh that's going to mean that the um actual cages can jump off but these actually the suction doesn't come off it's just the cages can jump off so there you go that's an example that's what's happened there. So that's all we've done is removed the uh, fusion locks. Oh. Oh. How do you feel after your little adventure? Oh. That's, that's how I feel. <laughs> that's how you feel. That's how I feel. It wasn't the gravel road that caused issues for you? No, no, it was the victory. <laughs> I just blew like 20 metres down the road near this side. <laughs> well, it probably would have been that hot from the corrogation and it hit the road and, and gone. It's gone boom. Yeah. I mean, no, this is... It. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to say... Oh, yeah. Can I tell you, we are just high five. Yeah, we did the corrugation. Oh, oh you? Yeah. Work, <laughs> mate. Bush mechanic. Hey. <laughs> you get it. Probably all for Toyota, because I used to have a Toyota. <laughs> now, were they not the right nuts for the rims, were they? Right, okay, now I get it. You're trying, oh, to, yeah, trying to tell me with all that you don't have the right one. I've still got another three of these buckets too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's going to be the funniest? Pick up all the little washers out of the yeah, road no. here. <laughs> He's getting comfy, look. I'm getting comfy. <laughs> well, whose bright idea was this? <laughs> that was mine. Yeah, yeah, oh, we're on yeah. bloody everything. Yeah, there, there, yeah. there we go. Hi, <laughs> luck to the rescue. Yeah. All the best. Good luck with everything. <laughs> See you. Right, that good old dirt road's finished. Now we're going to air back up. All right, if I can get this back in. <laughs> Luckily, it didn't work, then, did it? No. I've got to grow some muscles, man. Air back up to road pressures. What are your road pressures? What's my max load rating? What's my max load pressure, babe? Quick. Um, 16 five. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Oh, look at it. It's nearly 65 now, because it's hot. So 65 cold pressures, but because there's so much heat in the tyre, I dropped them back down to 50, but because they're so hot now, the temperature's up further. So I'm just going to throw a little bit more in. I dropped these down to about 32, I think. There you go, 40. Massive difference, eh, from cold pressures to hot pressures? Yeah. 
the wild horses everywhere. The signs say so, and look, I can see their prints. Oh, yeah, this was about 35. Better bring them up to about 55. I'll leave it for now and I'll pull it back up when it's all cold, everything's cooled back down to the top of cold temperatures. This map here gives you a pretty good idea of what we've just done. So Uluru, that's where we were a few days ago. This is where we were camped up um, recently when we did the Kings Canyon. And we've come across this here, this shortcut road. That's that dirt road we just went on. Instead of coming all the way down here and coming back up this way. So we've taken the shortcut and we are going to head along here and check out Palm Valley, Hermansburg, all those places, and then head up and check out Ormiston and Gorge and along the top Another there. change of plans because that sign right there, you can't see it on this side, but on the other side, it says stop, tours, and campground closed. Good on ya. Hey, <laughs> look. Oh, no, there we go. Uh, stop. <laughs> so, because he's in such a good mood and wants to continue driving, he's gonna drive another 20 k's to Mueller Creek Camp. <laughs> mm. This is our alternative option for the night, and we have both unanimously voted no. So, what are we doing now? Going back to Alice <laughs> just for the night. We'll get to the post office, get all the stuff that's there, and then do the north side of the West McDonald Range and float back around. I don't know if we're going to go back down this way and do the Fink. We'll just have to leave the caravan somewhere up on the northern and the northern side of the McDonald and then go do the Fink River and all them places and Boggy Hole and all them places. So, good times. I'm de definitely not leaving the caravan at Hammondsburg was it? Hermansburg? Hermansburg? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I jumped back in the car quick smart actually. Yes. <laughs> yes. ground that we've ended up coming to is right behind the truckers hall of fame and i've seen some really cool photos of what's inside there and um, we've driven through trains and trucks and tractors and um what are those things called cannons and we even drove over a train line it seems like everywhere you look there's something of interest <laughs> better stop exploring because unlike me who's still full of energy and really excited to see where we are Chris is usually quite cranky is not the word yes it is he's usually very focused on food and showering and usually sleeping or resting so I'm gonna stop my adventuring for now and I'm gonna go back I did make sure the hot water was turned on for him though but I have not unpacked the caravan yet um, so he can't take a shower because all the stuff is still in the shower so I'm gonna go and do that and hopefully I'll be able to show you a little bit more of this fascinating place tomorrow. Putting in perspective where we are, that's where we were. And look what's through here. And right behind us, we have this, I was gonna say little beauty, but it is not a little beauty. It goes all the way down there, comes along here behind our van and all the way out there, literally into the sunset. All right, caravan duties 
a call in my name. Not every day you find a workout buddy when you're traveling full time. This beautiful lady, Donna, right here, has been my workout buddy <laughs> for the past probably four weeks now, I think. Yeah. Uh, a lady saw me working out yesterday and she sent me a message and said, if you want a workout buddy, I'm here. So I met her, we had a chat. She's a PT, so she's actually gonna do our session this morning. Are you excited? <laughs> I'm not coming up with a workout, it's not my fault. It's exciting, are you it excited? Will be. Donna's excited. Session. We don't know, I think we're gonna do a hit session, but she's coming up with the exercises, not me. So like I said, not my fault. <laughs> We've been sitting here in Alice Springs for a little while and we haven't once pulled the camera out to explain what's going on. So the last you would have seen, we came across the um, Marini Loop Road, hoping to spend a couple of nights in Alice and then head off and explore the West McDonald Range. Well, what happened while we were here was that, hey, COVID went rampant and Alice Springs has declared a hotspot. So we've been put into lockdown uh, for three days. Now that's meant to lift tomorrow. So hopefully that will lift and we can take off and continue our adventures. But we have been here, we've been, um, I've been editing, writing, updating the website, doing all those sorts of things because we have been out of service for a little while. So we've got internet here. It's been not the best internet, but enough to be able to let me um, do what I've had to do, which has been really good. And Chris has just been doing bits and pieces on the truck. So fingers crossed that um, everything goes back to normal, normal <laughs> tomorrow. Um, and we can go off and do a little bit of exploring. So as you guys are all aware, plans are always changing, but that's just a little update on where we are and what we're doing right now. Well, it's Sunday morning. It's really early and <laughs> we're about to head off and uh, finally explore the West McDonald Ranges. Lockdown has been great in Alice, but really it's time to move on. Are you ready to go? What's that say? I want to drink my coffee first before I even talk on the camera. I bet you're sad that we're leaving Alice now. <laughs> Just thought I'd, want, I'd show you what Chris was up to while we've been here. You see those dirt piles over there? He's been making jumps. <laughs> see his little bike. That's for the kids. Bike tracks for the kids, and Chris's almighty jump was on the other side over there. <laughs> making no. good use of your time. Yep. Yeah. In lockdown, <laughs> built jumps. And we have actually been out the back of the road transport. Hall of Fame. Road and, transport? Yeah, it's a road, that's why there's trains. It's oh, there's a truck. No, trains and trucks and all sorts of things. We didn't actually go inside because, well, most of the time we were here, we were in lockdown and then it opened up yesterday and we had stuff to do and now we're leaving. So we didn't actually get to go inside and have Good. a look. No more museums. <laughs> but we do hear really cool things about that. So if you want to go and check out the Road Transport Hall of Fame in Alice Springs, that's it right there. <laughs> that's, that's him. You know what I mean. Alice Springs done and dusted finally. Bye. Bye Alice. It's just in the background over there. We have been here for Fink. We came back in from Uluru and then we got into a lockdown. So. Got into a bit of trouble. <laughs> yeah, we were, we've been stuck here for how many nights? Six nights I think. Yeah. Six nights at this old truck museum, train museum, and we are done. I so say we won't be back, but we actually do have to come back because a couple of items from Australia Post have decided to take an extra like 10 days to arrive. <laughs> So yes, to we have to be back, back Alice, but we're going to be back for one hour and then we are out, out. To, to SA. So now, West McDonald Range, we're just going to do this for about a week, I think. We've got a fair bit to explore around here um, yeah, and some epic campgrounds. So let's go do it. Let's West McDonald on. Ranges, you! So here's a little map of where we're going. We're here, going to make our way around the top and then back around the bottom. So first stop of our lovely West McDonald Range drive is going to be Simpsons Gap. This. And look babe, Ranger Station. And look your favourite thing. Information. Information eh? All the information. So who was Simpson? Apparently no one really knows and no one knows why it was changed from Simpson to Simpson. But it, um, the name Simpsons Gap first appeared on a sketch map made um, in 1871. So thanks to Gilbert McKinn, we don't know who Simpson was. <laughs> But we do know that this was a pastoral lease called Simpsons Gap Station, used for fattening stock on their way to market. 
I did read here that Simpsons Gap is one of the most prominent gaps in the West McDonald Ranges. At dawn and dusk, it's renowned as a place to see black-footed rock wallabies. We're not going to be here at dawn or dusk, so none of that for us. Also, Simpsons Gap Bike Park, which is mm, 17 kilometres. Which we read now. Yeah, we won't be doing that either. We should do more research before we embark on these adventures. Simpsons Gap, Stanley Chasm, the Hugh Gorge and Birthday Waterhole, Ellery Creek, Big um, Hole, Serpentine Gorge, Oak Pits, Ormiston Gorge, Mount Sonder, Red Bank Gorge, and Goss Bluff. So I don't know if we're going to be seeing all of these today, but quite no, a few, over the week we're going to. Yeah, yeah, quite a few. You can walk in and just walk back out again, but we are going to allow a fair amount of time to actually explore these places. Probably, but not bye bye. There are a few walks you can do while you're here. There's a 15 minute walk, a 20 minute walk, an hour walk, and then there's a big, big, big long walk. So we don't really know what we're going to do yet, but this one here says 20 minutes return. So maybe we'll start with that one. <laughs> lips are turning purple my fingers are frozen it is like six degrees and blowing and an absolute gale here <laughs> it's so cold nose is running oh my goodness the outback in winter yay so while we were hanging out over this side of the gap we heard a little kind of a bang sounded a bit like a whip cracking and then a few minutes after that we heard an almighty crash so i think almighty crash it was an almighty crash i think rock fell down somewhere Somewhere over there. But probably not that many rocks. No, not that many. Not that many. Look, this is how this is. This is orca. Just reckons we're at the orca pit. Is this is this orca pit? Is it okra? What is it? I call it okra. You call it okra, and you call it orca. I've brought shorts and a towel. Have you brought shorts and a towel? I've got shorts on. I'm just going to walk back to the van with no shorts on. <laughs> Oh, I've got no undies on either. It's alright. <laughs> Does it hurt? 